Hello there, welcome back to another Sage training video. Up to this point, we've gone through a number of things on Sage, such as adding company details, changing the financial year, changing the password on Sage. We've had a look at the nominal list, how to add new nominal codes, editing codes, and we've also had a brief look at the customer module, the sales ledger, how to add new customers, edit customers, very basic things like that. We're going to carry on with the customer module in this video. If you feel like you need to recap on some of those things I just mentioned, or if you've joined the course here, then please go back and watch from the beginning. You know, this course is absolutely for free. There's no registration. So go back and watch it as many times as you need to watch it. Just to reiterate what I've mentioned in previous videos, if you go to my website, freebookkeepingaccounting.com, click on free stuff, find the Sage link. It's much better for you to take the course using the links on this page. So this is the Sage 50 Cloud course, which is here. So the links to this course will appear under this title. It's just so much better than trying to use YouTube that doesn't always suggest the next video to watch. Something else to mention while I've got the website open is if you need one-to-one -one Sage tuition or if you need support by email, I do offer both. Just click on services here and follow the relevant links. Okay, so let's carry on from where we left off. So in the previous vid video, we looked at adding customers and editing customers. In this video, we're going to look at invoicing, how to post customer invoices sales invoices to Sage 50 Cloud. Now there are two ways to do this and it all depends on what you want the software to do. If you are raising invoices on separate software, let's say you have some sort of invoicing software you use or you raise invoices on Excel or something like that, then all you need to do is record the invoices on Sage. You don't necessarily have to raise new invoices because they're already raised. You just have to record the invoice on Sage. If you want to do it that way, then there is a batch invoice screen up here and a batch credit. And we'll go through both of these buttons in a moment. If you actually want to raise invoices on the software, if you want to create an invoice and send it to a customer using Sage, then there is a different option and that's the invoices and credits module here. If you click on that, it takes you to a brand new screen where you can add new invoices and new credit notes. So let's look at the batch invoice and batch credit note first of all. So this is just for recording sales invoices that have been raised elsewhere. Simply click on batch invoice. You will have the batch customer invoice screen up here. We have a table here, and all we do is fill in the details row by row for each individual invoice. So one invoice will be entered on row one, another invoice row two, etc., etc. The first thing we need is the customer name. So let's do one for Google Limited. So customer code Google, the date of the invoice. Let's say this was the 15th or the 9th, 2019. Now the due date is brought up automatically by the term set in the customer account. If you remember on the previous video, we went to the customer account and we changed the payment terms or looked at the payment terms such as on this screen, but on credit control here, you have a credit limit and you also have payment terms. So if we do payment due 15 days after invoice date, and save that then when we raise an invoice for Google then you'll see that automatically the due date will be based on 15 days after the date of the invoice so as mentioned in previous videos it's really important that you fill in as much information as you can on the software click on each of these tabs do a bit of exploring enter as much as you can because it's only going to help you later on and save you time later on. Sage software is fantastic if you have the correct data in the software, the correct, uh, the correct settings. So if you enter as much as you can, you'll really start using the software 
to its potential and really save yourself a lot of time. So anyway, going back to batch invoice, we can put in the date, the due date will come up automatically. The invoice reference, so let's say it was I3518. The nominal code that you want to book this to. Now as mentioned previously, sales codes are generally 4,000 codes and you can see we have sales north, sales south, sales east as I changed and uh, added earlier on in this course. So let's select the sales code we need. Departments I'll come to later on and project reference I'll come to later on uh, in this course. Enter the details of the invoice so it could just be sale of product A whatever the invoice description is. The net amount let's do 100. This is the tax code. T1 is set at 20. Later on in this course I'll show you how to edit and add these tax codes. So the VAT is calculated automatically on the net. So at 20% VAT we've got 100 net, 20 pound VAT. The amount paid, if something's been paid up in front like a deposit, you can enter that there. And then that's it. I've tabbed across and we're down to the new line. So let's add an invoice this time for Sandman Supplies. So Sandman Supplies let's say this was 0509-2019 once again the due date will come up automatically on what has been set on the customer account let's say this was I3517 4003 sales east details sale of product B. Let's say this was 75 with 20% VAT, which is 15 pounds. And then we can just tab down to the new line. Now, if you have a more simplified version of Sage, then some of these columns may not even appear, such as department and project reference. You may find that some of these columns also to the right do not appear. Don't worry about that. I've just got the most extensive version of Sage here. So there's a lot more columns, makes it slightly more confusing. But as mentioned earlier, I'll come to these columns later on in this course because these are very advanced features of Sage and we don't need to cover them here. Okay, once I'm happy to add those invoices to the customer accounts, all I do is click Save. The screen will go blank, the table will go blank, and you'll see we have balances on these accounts. Now if I go to Google Limited and click on the activity tab, you'll see that there's an invoice that appears on this activity tab now and it's showing as outstanding O slash S, £120 invoice 3518. That's the invoice I added and the same would happen with Sandman Supplies. Now how do we do a credit note? It's exactly the same way. Just click on Batch Credit Note or Batch Credit. Fill in the details. Let's do Google again. Let's do 17th of the 9, 2019. The due date will be calculated um, as per today's date. Generally, credit notes don't have a due date, hence why it's defaulted as the date of the invoice. Credit note number I, or we could do CN0185. The sales code to book the credit against. Let's do sales north. Department project reference details. Let's just do credit for faulty product A. The net amount, let's do 40, is the net. Tax code is T1, but if we want to change that, we can do here. And once again, I'll show you how to edit and add these codes later on in this course. So let's just click on T1, click OK, and then click Save. That credit note will now be entered on the system. If I click on Google Limited and go to the Activity tab, you'll see that they have a sales invoice and a sales credit now showing 
on their account. Later on in this course, I'll show you how to create custom statements so you'll be able to see these things on a statement that you can send to your customers. Now, how do we actually raise copies of invoices? How do we actually raise invoices on Sage so we can send them to our customers? As mentioned earlier, all we do is go to invoices and credits here. We have this screen up here. This would usually show a list of all the invoices that have been raised on the software. Because I've raised none, there is nothing showing, but as we start raising invoices, they will appear. So let's click on new invoice. You'll have this invoice template appear. Basically what we want to do is fill in this template uh, that will then raise the invoice. So all the data we enter on this template will show on the invoice. So we can do invoice, let's say it's a service invoice. The date is, let's say, the 5th of the 9th, 2019. Account, let's do one to Sandman Supplies. Invoice number is generated automatically. So this one will show as invoice number one. But if we want our invoices to start, say, at 1002, then we can enter that there. The next invoice will then be 1003 automatically, 1004. It will just follow numerically. So you can enter whatever reference you want up here, and then you won't have to enter that in future. It will just do that automatically. With the due date, once again, this is calculated automatically from the customer account. We fill in the details on the invoice. We put in the amount, the VAT, if we want to edit the VAT, just simply click on this little arrow that appears in the description. We'll then have a further breakdown and further options such as the VAT amount and other options, which I'll come to later on in this course. Once we're happy, we just click save. You'll see that this invoice now appears on this screen. There are a number of columns here that can be very useful. One will tell you if the invoice has been printed, if it's been emailed, and if it's been posted to the accounts. Simply saving an invoice on this screen will not post it to the customer account. If we were to go to Sandman Supplies, that invoice that I've just raised will not appear here. We've got the invoice I did earlier for sale of product B, nothing else is showing. To post it to the accounts, we simply highlight the invoice and we click update ledgers but first of all let's print this invoice or email the invoice by using the options up here so i'll highlight the invoice i'll click print choose the layout of invoice we want the best thing to do is play around and see which invoice layout you prefer but let's just choose a simple way for invoice and preview that. So here's the invoice. You can see all the data that appears at the top left is data we entered earlier for our company information. We have the invoice reference, the invoice date, the customer account, the customer address and name, the description, the amount, the VAT and the total. We also had the payment date at the bottom. We can then say that invoice print it, send it to our customer. Once we're ready to update the ledger, we just click update ledgers, click OK. You'll get a report generated that shows which invoices have been updated or posted to the ledgers. And you'll see that we have posted, ticked as yes, and printed also marked as yes. If we now go to the customer account and click on Sandman Supplies, you'll see that in the Activity tab, we have our new invoice, which has been raised and posted to their account. Now to raise credit notes, we do exactly the same thing. We click on New Credit, we fill in the template, we click Save. We then can print or email the credit note, and then we have to update the ledger. We have to send that credit note to the customer account and post it to the accounts. 
Now I understand that I've gone through a lot in this video in the last 15 minutes. I've gone through a lot with invoices and credit notes. The best thing to do is just try it yourself. The good thing with Sage is they do offer a practice account. So if you just go to file and new, um, open, sorry, you can open demo data. Sometimes there's an option for open practice data. Just click on that, play around, test it. If you don't have the software, download a free trial. There'll be a link in the description below. Download a free trial and uh, you know just play around and get used to it. But the important thing to remember from this video is if you just want to record invoices on Sage, use batch invoice and batch credit. If you want to actually raise invoices on Sage, you will need to do that on invoices and credits. You can then print and post or email, download an email, the invoice or credit note please ensure that you update the ledgers once the invoices have been raised and the credit notes have been raised they will not be posted to the customer accounts until the ledgers have been updated